don't like to say this, you know, to, uh, uh, you know, out loud, but I felt like act acting was uh, a little bit of a th therapeutic in a way. In this new chapter, however, Jaiman Hounsu wasn't living the dream right away. He was homeless on the streets in Paris even during the beginning of his high fashion modeling career. I spent a lot of time, in, uh, you know, a night navigating the streets of uh, Paris trying to find uh, something to eat, uh, go through the garbage. This is Cotonou, the political and economic capital of Benin in West Africa. Actor Jaiman Hounsou grew up here. At 13, he moved to Europe with his brother. He eventually became a successful model after meeting fashion designer Thierry Mugler. But times before were uncertain. Was there a rocky time in, in Paris? Well, rocky time came right after, you know, I uh, left school. I was not anymore legal because I'm no more student and I could not work. So I was left, uh, you know, shortly there, I was left uh, out on the street. I couldn't walk around too much because obviously, you if you get caught noticed. by, uh, you know, noticed uh, or get stopped by police, you uh, deported immediately. So how old were you when you were living on the street? Uh, by then I was like uh, eight, eight, 17, 18, 18. So I spent a lot of time in, uh, you know, a night navigating the streets of uh, Paris trying to find uh, uh, something to eat uh, through, uh, you know, so I'll go through um, buildings and uh, go through the garbages. And where would you typically sleep? I slept mostly in uh, train stations. I mean, uh, at a, at a train station, subways, or uh, summertime on the, on the benches on the streets. How did you meet Thierry Mugler? That was a pure accident. Uh, so here I am in Paris. I don't know what to do. And um, I ran into a photographer. And he took a couple of pictures of me and, uh, and suggested that I, uh, I should go and uh, uh, meet some of his friends at this uh, agency. One day they sent me uh, sent me to, uh, they, they, they sent me to a couple of auditions and uh, the one, the main one was uh, Terry Mugler. And mind you, I've been sleeping on the streets for some time and I have to go to fountains uh, sometimes to wash. You were going to these auditions and you were still living on the streets? Yes. So they're like, okay, go to this audition and so on and so forth. And so I went and uh, I walk into Terry Mugler office, met this young um, uh, head of the press or whatever. So he gives me uh, this uh, suit to wear, puts me in a room. I'm trying to wear a suit and then I'm, I decide I'm gonna go to the bathroom first before I put on the suit so I can wipe myself down a little bit and this and that, rounds back, put the suit on. Um, I felt like I was dirtying their clothes. I was gonna, you know, dirt their clothes, and uh, you know, they're gonna get their clothes. But I said, "Oh, you know, so they're gonna ruin your work again, you know, getting a job." And, and I, you know, and then I, I, I came back, came out of the room with a suit on. He goes to me, "Here, no, take the suit off. Put this on." It was some sort of uh, leathery uh, mm -hmm. undergarment. Yes. Indeed, thank you for the word. I put it on and I come out very uncomfortable and when I get nervous and comfortable and secure, I start to sweat because <laughs> there's so much that's coming, trying to come out, you know? And uh, so I'm sweating, <laughs> which is not... Not great if you're not, in a leather undergarment either. No, no, no. So I went to see Mugler and I walk into the room and he's sitting there with all his, you know, entourage looking at me and in French expressing how beautiful I am. The first thing that flashed through my mind is, my goodness, 
what setting, what am I doing? My mom's gonna look at this and think, wow, what in the world? I brought my child to this, you know, and he's gonna, is this what is he gonna become? You know, what I'm becoming is like, and you have to understand, Mugler was, you know, I mean, at the time they were, you know, he was one of the greatest, you know, designers of Paris. So there was kind of like a few so things. There was a conflict, even though. Oh, it was not a happy day, no. It was like a full of conflict. But it kicked off your modeling career. It totally kicked off my mo modeling career. I actually came with him in America with him first time, you know, to continue doing uh, his artwork, uh, his uh, book. And that was your first trip to America? That was my first trip to America. Did you come here wanting to act? Yes, directly. Uh, within less than a week I was here, I had um, I met uh, a very, you know, one of the greatest directors uh, of today, David Fincher. Um, the girl with the dragon tattoo. Right, seven. Yeah, seven. And so through him I met Madonna. And from Madonna, I met Herb Ritz, mm -hmm. who immediately great photographer. Uh, great photographer. And uh, and through Herb Ritz, I met Janet Jackson. But Armistad is considered your breakout moment. Did you think it would have the um, success that it ended up having, and more importantly for you personally? I thought so because it was a great story. It was uh, one of those most, uh, uh, you know, powerful stories that, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, about Africans that defines African Americans, uh, African Americans' legacy, uh, and that a lot of people were shy about wanting to hear or wanting to see. Yeah. How did your life change with that film? Oh, dramatically. I mean, I was, uh, was received at the time by uh, uh, Clinton and his uh, administration. The house was, uh, the film was uh, screened for the White House. When you have such, a, an, a, a, such a, an experience as that, again, I always feel like life, you've got to put it in context with where you've come from. Mm -hmm. You're being received by the president. You slept in a shack with no windows, no doors, and mosquitoes. You slept on the streets in Paris. And then fast forward, you're meeting the president. You're having these people celebrate you. Tell me what goes through your mind, because even now you're getting emotional. It was a great journey. But uh, but I, I strongly feel like I'm still at the beginning of the, uh, that journey, you know? You will find it for me. The 2006 film Blood Diamond was set in Sierra Leone in the 1990s, a time of civil war and a time when more than 4% of all African diamonds were sold on the black market. Alongside Leonardo DiCaprio, Jaiman Hounsou played Salman Vandi, a fisherman forced to work in a diamond mine after being captured by rebels. Where is the diamond? Where is the diamond? Do you see a diamond? Huh? You devils have taken my family, my home, and they lost everything. Thank you. Back at home in Beverly Hills, he's a loving husband and father. Married to Kimora Lee Simmons, well known in her own right as an American fashion model and former president and creative director for the apparel line Fat Fashions. In May 2009, their son, Kenzo Lee Hounsou, was born. This is the whole family, lots of pictures of the whole family. This is the whole family. I mean, from grandma, great grandma, 
Lots of pictures of you and uh, Kimor looking very glamorous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, those are some of our vacation pictures. Um, we have pictures from Africa, my nieces from Africa. Mm -hmm. Everyone too. And the little man, well, he's much bigger now, but Kenzo. Yeah. Yeah. You're a kid who grew up with a great amount of hardship. Yeah, yeah. They wonder whether sometimes being in a place like L.A. and living the life you have and a life of huge luxury now, whether there's ever a kind of Constantly. Discomfort. This is, in a way, for my family, not so much for me. I can go back any day, any time. Go, I can go back on the street any day. Do you really think you could? Yeah. This is for my kids. I was going to ask you, um, and it's what kind of father you are, particularly in light of your own childhood, to your children. I hope for them, they would have to define that, but I hope for them that I'm a great father, the father who is there, uh, who is always there when uh, they're most needed. I mean, like, if I'm not on set, I'm... We're here. I'm here and making sure I take them to school, making sure, I, you know, I, I, I do uh, some, of the, some, some of the activities with them. Along with his acting career and family life, Jaiman Hounsou is also an activist. In 2009, he spoke at the United Nations Summit on Climate Change. And the charity work you do. Why have you chosen charities like Oxfam, SOS, working with the UN on climate change? Well, Oxfam, for, for uh, uh, being one of the charities I... I I greatly admire is it's because they um, they stand for the advancement and the self-sufficiency of you know each country and individuals uh, you know as they say you know teach a man how to fish and he can you know mm -hmm. feed you know himself and his family for a long time instead of having to just feed himself for the day you know they they provide the tools to you know, for, for, for the continent to be self-sufficient. I mean, not just the continent, but, the, you know, third world countries in general. I like that idea, self-sufficiency. How do you balance it all? Not just the acting, the desire to be an activist who makes a difference on the continent, the desire to be a good husband and father. I don't, I just kind of like, uh, go about it on a daily basis. You can never get away from who you are and what makes you. So at the end of the day, my legacy and for my people to exist, I need to tell my story, some of my story on the world stage, whether I need to commercialize those stories like Blood Diamond or what? Your people are very proud of you, I'm sure. I, yeah, I mean, I hope so, and I try and tell some of the stories uh, in the most, uh, with the most uh, humble approach. In German House, we wish you the very best of luck with telling those stories, and thank you so much for just sharing so much of your personal story with African Voices. Thank you.